It sounds too crazy to be true, but it is a reality. Off the coast of Japan lies a gigantic underwater structure that could testify to the existence of a long-forgotten advanced civilization. In detail, the mysterious formation was created at a time when the ancient Egyptians didn't even know what a pyramid was. But why does the sunken site attract so little attention? What is behind the strange claims made by mainstream researchers? And above all, how can the huge monoliths, which look as though they have been carved using a futuristic laser cutting technique, be explained? The year is 1985, when Japanese diving instructor Kihichiru Arataki ventures into the underwater world off the island of Yonaguni to open up new diving sites for tourists. But instead of exotic sea creatures and fascinating underwater plants, he saw something that has divided the research world into two camps ever since. A huge, strange-looking rock platform that was apparently man-made. Now, you might think that the discovery of a sunken archaeological site is quite spectacular, but not necessarily groundbreaking. However, this changes abruptly when we consider the following. The area in question has been underwater for a whopping 8,000 years. While the enigmatic structure is around 200 meters long and 150 meters wide, this raises a fundamental question. Who built it? Who was capable of mastering such a challenging project at a time when mankind was still in the infancy of civilization? Well, conservative researchers, who are notoriously reluctant to leave the confines of official historiography, answer this question as follows. It was Mother Nature. For although the so-called Unaguni Monument boasts astounding precision and astonishingly straight lines, it is said to merely be a natural erosion platform. On the other hand, there is the assumption that we are dealing with the stone traces of a completely unknown culture. An assumption that is held by a certain Graham Hancock. If you watch our videos regularly, you will know that the British alternative researcher is firmly convinced that a highly developed civilization lived on Earth long before our time. However, the ancient high-tech people were completely wiped out by a global flood disaster at the end of the last ice age. Well, at least almost because a few people are said to have managed to escape annihilation and spread their advanced knowledge to the rest of the world. In the rest of the long-established research world, however, this hypothesis is not really welcomed with open arms. It is generally dismissed as utter nonsense. No wonder, the assumption that the Unaguni Monument was an artificial origin also stands in stark contrast to the current consensus. This states that, at the time, only simple hunter-gatherers lived in the southwest of Japan who simply could not afford a construction project of this magnitude. Despite all this, Hancock does not back down from his unconventional opinion, and he is not alone. Geologist Masaki Kimura from Ryoku University and Indian marine archaeologist Sri Sundaresh also have their problems with the erosion platform theory. After studying the ominous structure in detail, the experts pointed out, among other things, two megaliths with astonishingly straight lines and a trench with two 90-degree angles. In view of the fact that the Yanaguni Monument now lies around 25 meters below the surface of the water, Kamira estimates that the shadowy builder culture must have existed around 8,000 to 10,000 years ago, and it was by no means a loosely connected group, but a fully-fledged advanced civilization. Officially, however, the Sumerians are still regarded as the first people to reach this civilizational milestone. The creators of cuneiform writing and artificial irrigation lived in southern Mesopotamia in the 3rd millennium BC, 3,000 to 5,000 years after the supposed builders of the Unaguni Monument. Despite all the exciting alternative beliefs, we should not leave one thing unmentioned. There are also critical dissenting voices, even from the otherwise skeptical camp. Geologist Robert Schock, for example, is best known for his controversial redating of the Great Sphinx of Giza. In view of the conspicuous traces of water erosion, Schock came to the conclusion that the statue must actually be several millennia older than generally assumed. In the case of the Yonaguni Monument, however, the Boston University professor is of the opinion that we are dealing with a natural geological formation. Well, with one small caveat. It is conceivable that the locals have polished parts of the rock to make it appear artificial. This floating monolith is a huge mystery. 
from the mysterious underwater world back to the surface. In Hyogo Prefecture, near the town of Tagasago, sits a stone structure that is no less enigmatic than the Yonaguni Monument. In detail, it is a monolith almost 6 meters high and weighing an estimated 500 tons, which goes by the name of Isho no Hoden. However, there are a few factors that make this silent witness to history so much more than just an ordinary lump of rock. On the one hand, there are almost ridiculously straight edges, and on the other, it looks as if the massive load is floating above the surface of the water. However, this is not due to a mythical levitation technique, but to the column in the middle of the base, which appears invisible at first glance. Researchers generally assume that the megalith was never completed, but was left where it was carved. The Shintu Temple is located not far from the Colossus, and there is a simple reason for this. Ishi no Hoden has been revered as a shrine for centuries. But what is the background of this object? What do we know about its builders and its intended use? Well, the official version says that the rock was probably intended as a grave. This is a perfectly plausible assessment, but there is a small but crucial catch. There is simply no solid evidence for this. However, there is also no solid evidence for the theory that the precise side edges of the rock were carved with the tools we know. Such traces of working are only visible under the megalith, at the point where it is attached to a larger boulder. Geologists often explain the absence of such traces with erosion, but Ishi no Hoden was covered with rubble for a long time. With this in mind, one could be forgiven for thinking that the structure was not shaped using simple tools such as pickaxes and chisels. But how could it have been created? Well, the short and sweet answer is, we don't know. The only thing that is certain is that the rock and the surrounding rock were subjected to a series of modern laser measurements in 2005 and 2006. The experts came to the conclusion that Ishi no Hoden consists of hyloclastite, a special volcanic form of rock that was formed around 70 million years ago. Many an alternative mind quickly thinks of ancient lasers and other high technologies in light of this. But in this case too, the clear evidence has yet to emerge. The same also applies to the contemporary reports on the creation of the boulder, although Ishi no Hoden is already mentioned in the Harama Fudakai, whose roots go back to the year 713 AD. The reason for its creation and the construction techniques used are not mentioned at all. Is the truth hidden in the fantastic legends? If Graham Hancock and company have their way, we would be well advised not to regulate the myths of our ancestors to the realm of fictional fairy tales, but rather to regard them as the result of a real memory. No wonder, after all, one of the British author's main arguments is based on the mysterious similarities and the legendary traditions of the various peoples. After all, practically every people knew the story of an all-destroying flood that brought forth higher beings with extraordinary knowledge. While, according to Hancock, these stories reveal the true background of the presumed precursor civilization, the question arises as to whether the mythological bridge can also be built to the Ishu no Hoden. So, let's take a closer look at the matter. Basically, the records from the Shinto shrine mentioned above tell us that the Kami Okunushi once ruled the land over Izumu in what is now Shimane Prefecture, a brief classification. In Shintoism, kami are reversed spirits or gods. While the concrete translation of the term into German is quite tricky, it is clear that at the Shinto religion, there is an ancient connection between the kami and severe waves of disease, droughts, and floods. Seen through the historical lens of Hancock, the question therefore arises as to whether the defined figures also emerged this time after a devastating catastrophe, and in reality embody the survivors of the predecessor culture. And we remember, the collectively forgotten people are said to have perished at the end of the last ice age, and lo and behold, some archaeological finds indicate that the belief in and worship of the Kami gods goes back deep into the Jomon period. The prehistory of Japan, which is divided into several phases, is dated to around 14,000 to 300 BC. No less exciting is the fact that the Kami Okunushi were known as the god of construction and was also admired for his secret knowledge and extraordinary healing skills. And isn't it amazing that we also find this wisdom symbolism in many other deities from completely different corners of the world? Just think of Krikrops from the Greek mythology 
the hybrid of man and dragon, is regarded as the founder of Athens, who introduced marriage, the first state institutions, and property rights. On the other side of the world, in Mesoamerica to be precise, the feathered serpent Quasotical took on a similar role in Mesopotamia. Oans was considered to be the first bringer of culture. However, it seems that not every gift of civilization was intended to be handed over in its entirety. The local Shinto myth, for example, reports that Okanushi was in the process of creating a magnificent monument, the foundation stone of which was Hisho no Hoden. However, after the first piece was completed, a bloody riot broke out, forcing the kami to turn away from his construction and ultimately leave it unfinished. There is no question that this mythological decoding offers a new and exciting clue. And yet, until this theory is backed up by solid archaeological evidence, it will remain pure speculation. At present, we only know that the mysterious boulder exists. When and how it was created is still unknown. However, it is well known when and how you can join our community. Namely, now and with a simple click on the subscribe button. So feel free to give us a thumbs up and subscribe so you never miss another exciting video from us.